We are not back, but live with a baby. Hey, Lord, some drool. John's Buds episode. What an appearance. What a way. That's the greatest guest appearance of all time. Uh, what an all right, John's Buds. Cassie's already out. We have another guest who's like half ditching, half not. This is a disaster. Sure. No, this is perfect. All right, episode 108, a.k.a. the Wayne Gretzky plus Miko Koivu episode, as always, but for the first time live in person. There she goes. That was pretty Be close. More. Spoke Z joined by two of my very good buddies. Once again, for the first time live in person, let's introduce Isha, the founding father. First, Isha, how are we doing? Good, good. Happy to uh, meet you literally 20 minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> and here we are here live we are. talking hockey. Well, maybe we'll talk we some hockey. Really I'm not sure yet. Last We're... time you guys talked way too much Bachelors. Well, someone had to do it, but maybe we'll do that again. That guy had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> too much Bachelor? Bachelor. That was like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you let it drag out. Could have been last week. We don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, I believe it. And as always, my gracious host. For the next few days, as I am in the great state of Minnesota. Mr. At State of Hoppy. Hoppy. How we doing? Well, I, I never thought there'd even be a chance that you'd relocate. But after taking you to Northeast Minneapolis, I think there's like a 30% chance I can get you to move here. I mean, I'm just not going to go home. That's the thing. I'm, I immediately met the dog and it was over from there. Okay. Permanent vacation. Yeah, this might be, yeah, this is the only place that has a, has a dog. Um, we act, we legit have, this might be the, uh, the least planned <laughs> episode of all time. Oh, yeah. There's no outline, which is, impressive. Yeah, I was looking for an outline. I was no. like, there, there isn't one. Doesn't exist. Yeah. No, 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 there's no, there's no outline here. So we're just, just gonna, gonna it's going to riff here. Um, we just got back from two amazing establishments. Uh, Tony. Tony <laughs> so amazing. You forgot the name. <laughs> and Moose Bar and Grill. People had tweeted Moose Bar, Moose, Moose in North. I don't know. Wait, were they both suggestions from people on Twitter? Yeah, I just took oh, okay. Twitter. That yeah. makes it a lot cooler. That yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. And then there are a couple others that we got. A bunch of uh suggestions for that we'll What's we'll the be one that uh, you got a bunch of 1029 1029 i'm not even familiar so people are probably gonna carve i found the website 4. 4. 4.4 stars i found the website and there were, the first picture was like an outdoor party under a tent so like i oh yeah it looks like quite the spot yeah it looks looks great so we'll maybe try that eventually at oh isn't point. that like was that stanley's or something that also had the outdoor tent party uh yeah maybe that yes actually and then the other one was uh was it dusty's there was a bunch that a lot of people said dusty's yeah yeah so we'll when we're gonna hit them all um here come the bots finally all right um i mean we're here obviously the frozen four <laughs> will be i guess not i wish i it. wish cosgrove was here Cos yeah <laughs> cosimoto there he is i don't there, think we have enough way, black there's a tables, ring but... light directly in the middle of the screen not lit but no, yeah, it's not on. It's just the camera that is on, but it's just attached to a ring light that's off. So it's also very funny, and I can't really, I have no idea. I can't really see much of the screen, so that's entertaining for me and no one else. Um, but we are here, the Frozen Four, finally. I cannot wait. You got a team involved, too, though, so you're oh, like... There's two. Two teams involved. Yeah, but they're both not your teams. There's one right. that's your True. team. So that gives just an extra excitement, I imagine. Yeah, and I didn't... Well, it's not just Z's team. It's Z and Mike Grinnell's okay. team. Oh, yes. Yeah. We, don't to, we don't have to start there. <laughs> we'll take a sip of this. Um, yeah, I should have grabbed a beer already. Yeah, Oops. Seriously. Um, but we are here for the Frozen Four. I can't wait. We've got other prospect updates we have to touch on that came in the second I landed today which is that wednesday but everyone's listening i guess if you're not tuning in live a couple days later um yeah this one probably has to go up tomorrow <laughs> yeah this this might be a time sense i'm pulling a, a z tonight i ain't sleeping boys we're gonna get to sounds it. like no that's not even a z anymore that's an isha yeah, yeah i don't know I, I know i'm rivaling this guy for the lack of sleep but a rival ring rival ring ring that'll work yeah no like that's it. that says it um isha ism how number how many <laughs> Fellowship of the Rival Ring. 
Well, we could start in a bunch of places, but I just kind of <laughs> want to start. First of all, again, this is my fi- finally. I am in Minnesota for the first time in my life, which is a, which is comical. But uh, six thirty a.m. flight from Boston to Philly, two hour layover, Philly to St. Paul, not Minneapolis. Um, I'll tell you what. If you think I need an alarm to wake up this morning, you're out of your fucking tree. I have been awake since two o'clock in the morning. Immediate kick, immediate kick in the dick, though. Yeah, that sucks. I had I just woke up. I was like, well, I'm not falling back asleep. Immediately woke up and decided, I guess I'll just make a uh ham, egg, and cheese on an English muffin for uh when I get hungry at the airport later. Just got into an Uber at 420, left though, left that. It's just in my room. So that, so I mean, like realistically, weekend ruined. So that was a tough start. Yeah, um, losing the sandwich, like I wouldn't have even gone. Yeah, no, know. I, I almost just went back to bed, but it's fine. We did end up making it. Flight two, though. <laughs> Flight number two from Talk Philly to St. Paul. First of all, my seat was in. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Wait, flight flight one. I was in the furthest. I was literally against the back of the plane. What a community! The people that sit in the back, group nine, last aboard, just a bunch of beauties who, like me, found the cheapest option to get from point A to point B. We immediately sat down, buzzing immediately. The girl, <laughs> I was shout out me aisle seat. Um, she was in the middle. This girl comes up, she goes, I am, unfortunately, you, you are not in this row by yourself. I have to sit next to you. And I was like, okay, that's weird. She goes, by the way, full transparency, I am still shit-faced from last night. And I was like, all right, that's awesome. Good for you. Person next to us in the other fucking row just goes, same here, bro. And I was like, this is amazing. I love this. Last night was Tuesday. Um, so we had a great time. What a, what a group of like nine people just an absolute bunch of morons in the back of the plane meanwhile the flight attendants they were sitting that they just were stationed fully in the back and they just walked out right when like we took off like by the way no snacks drinks we don't have any cups today so no drinks either like we can't even give you guys water and everyone was just like what the fuck is going on here so shout out american airlines for that but either way great flight thanks to the beauties in the back flight two though we were in one first of all weirdest like gate of all time you have to walk outside across the parking lot to like climb stairs into this plane and i was like there's a 80 percent chance that well, you gotta you do that at make. every canadian airport it was bananas. I was thrown off. I was. It was sunny as shit. I didn't know where I put my sunglasses because I forgot immediately. I thought I may have left them next to my ham and ham, egg and cheese in my room. <laughs> Realized once I got here that it was too late that I did remember them, so I threw them on. That's why I'm wearing them now, <laughs> since I fucking found them. Um, but dude, we take off flight number two. This dude next to me. The second. We're in the air. I look over and he just starts dry heaving. He's like, mm. and he's like holding, like he's sweating. He's holding in. Like, I mean, he's holding on for dear life. And again, dry heaving. And I looked down at his phone. He is only <laughs> on Spotify. Like, I don't know if he was just like motivating himself, like pumping himself up to not puke all over the plane immediately once we took off but he's only playing and he again just restarts the song the first 30 seconds of bring me to life by evanescence and i am like i just i was like i poked him i was like just so you know if you throw up on me five minutes in this flight i will kill you and your whole family i swear to fucking god i'm not doing this today it is 10 50 in the morning if you throw up on me immediately and we sit here for two and a half hours that's it like we're gonna have to ground early and I will lose my fucking mind. He made it, though. Eventually, he was fine. And then he was just a pain in the ass the rest of the flight. Just no respect for the uh, the armrest. He was, like, typing like this, like a lunatic. Dude, Who typed duh. like this, by the way? He was elbows upside to the side. You know that song? 
he was doing that typing. Don't know what he was typing. The fucking essay. Um, but either way, we made it. Came Our best conduct there. is critical, by the way. Like right up there with like walking Dude. conduct as a pedestrian. I I was the nearly throwing up immediately once we were like in orbit was one thing, but the typing like like this. He's like halfway into my seat and I'm the one being like ooh, ooh. and I was like, well, I already threatened this guy. I can't do it again. So um, but either way, we ended up making it here. What an airport. That's the other thing. I got off uh uh whatever that gate E, and I was like, this is a really small airport. And I was like, I should probably figure out how to leave the airport uh and find wherever Hoppy's gonna pick me up. And then I, I found, I walked towards bag, baggage claim, and it's a mall, it's a hotel, there was a PGA store. I almost told Hoppy to turn around and give me like two hours to like walk around, um, but I did not thought about it though, it was legit, like, hey, you should turn around and go home for a little bit, I'm going to hang out here just to chill out. But either way, I am here, I am excited, and I might not go home um, back to Boston um hoppy tell everyone how amazing it is to have me grace you with my presence um it's been almost a whole day or isha not even it's been like five not even five out five and a half hours yeah i don't know the dude once once the time changes i don't know i don't know what you're one is. hour yeah. behind yeah, calm that's my down. whole life that's my whole <laughs> life. i can't handle anything are you gaslighting him for jet lag <laughs> one yeah. hour i mean wow. come on asshole i mean uh, i gotta say it's given me a new appreciation though for not even dive bars but just cheap beer like the level to which you celebrated a two dollar mcgolden and a, th a three dollar 25 cent uh hams was like insane i feel like i had the same reaction when we went to cowboy jacks that one time and they had the three dollar mcgolden deal i was just yeah. I, it blew my mind I was like, it, okay, it's going to be one of these type of nights. I'm coming from Boston, which is the most expensive place ever to live in. Ever. Um, Have you had a pull tab experience yet? I guess you've only they, 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 started them. They, they were transitioning workers. Oh, shit. So, like, they put up a sign that's literally like, I went and stood over there just to, like, see if she'd, like, entertain me. She didn't even acknowledge the that I was there. The sign basically said, don't even fucking think about it right <laughs> now. In a way more polite way. We need yeah, a fucking and, I, and I didn't even, like, notice the sign at first. I was more focused on, like, which box is ripe for the picking. And then all of a sudden I look up and I've got money in my hand. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, you're not going to serve me. And, oh, my God, you are pretending that I am not here. Like, you won't even make eye contact with me. Like, it was wild. Yeah, no, it wasn't. You got a few more days. No you got a few days. Honestly, Z was more interested in like the whole operation at the moose with like all the wires and all the dust There's and everything. That said, don't touch the wires. There's 12 iPads next to the <laughs> fucking like register where they're like typing in what like, it, I was like. Eventually, I had to call the uh, the bartender. Was like, excuse me, this is a very dumb question. Um, why are there literally? I counted. 12 ipads and her explanation was oh no that's not a dumb question um they, we're not allowed to have casinos here i was like i, I am actually way more confused than i was before i asked you that question. i have a belly button and she, and then she just goes it's for gambling i was like all right i won't okay now it kind no of more questions that's it i get it now the fuck was that? Fuck it, I don't even know. So I don't know. You can gamble on pads. But either way, they had a sign that said "Don't touch the wires," and uh, it was really hard. Once I saw the sign, it was hard not to. Uh, don't touch them, but cross them all you need. <laughs> no, yeah, you could, your wife. Yeah. Uh, no, you can. You can't be angry there. You're, you can only be happy at that place. That one establishment. Well, moose for the most part. Bar, that, or moose bar and there, there was one guy that wasn't happy, but. We won't get it. We won't. That. We can't talk about that guy. No. Um, All right, you guys have had a couple comments talking about the Coyote situation here, so let's rip that bandaid off. Coyote situation. They got the best jerseys in the league. Logan Cooley's going to be a stud, by the way. Uh, humble plug. Everyone should go check out today's episode of Fellowship of the Rink. Logan Cooley, great guest. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a shit sandwich. It's crazy. So all this news is dropping. 
what a wild day to have no access to the internet or like no access to the whatever. internet no for for like hours at a time where okay. when i left philly for minnesota the like the tweets that came out were the nhl has two scheduling plans in place specifically one that is the Arizona Coyotes remaining in Arizona. The other for them to move to Salt Lake City. That was just, and then I think I can't. I think it was, I don't know if it was Sarah Valley that tweeted that out, or it was Drager maybe, maybe or LeBron. Who knows? But either way, the, the ending of that tweet was like fluid situation. I was like, no shit, dude. Like, yeah, no, they're not sure. Like, they're just planning for two incredibly different scenarios. And then I land. And they're like, yeah, no, they're gone. They're basically, you can count on them moving to uh, Salt Lake next year, it sounds like. Which, usually, I know we've been flirting with them moving. For 10 years? Yeah, but it feels like it was still up in the air, up in the air, and then today it was like, yeah, no, they're done. Well, you know why. Like, they're about to round the corner. Like, they're about to be an okay team. Yeah. Like, all right, let's go now. Yeah, it's fucking unbelievable. And this is not like I feel bad because people who are in Arizona who are big Coyotes fans, they always get upset about the conversation around. Well, and I get it because the hardcores are hardcores. That's their team. Yeah. Right? Like and they it's have not, every right to be it's upset. It's not like, because there's no hockey fans in Arizona. No. It's because that fucking organization has been an absolute disaster. Well, and we run like a bunch of fucking morons since they moved from phoenix yeah. like it's been an absolute disaster and that's why they're moving it's not because there's no fans and like hockey isn't big there and like it can't work because gary bettman has also pretty much said by the way we're coming back which is just like wild no i, I can't no they, they <laughs> gotta get the full I, I gotta get the full z experience yeah no this is how it used to be i used to fucking i used to not put it on the mic stand thing holder yeah i love the like yeah and yeah i do i do less editing yeah, now than i did before um but either way <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no no editing um no but, but like our, our friend thing, our friend richie from sporty with Corey and richie i mean and they even put their podcast you know on hiatus because they were just done with it and they used to work in media covering the team and they had a podcast that went a few years and he even said like this year it was just apathy it was just like him and he, and he's as hardcore as it gets. Yeah, we talked to him the draft night. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he was saying even this year, like I refuse to overpay to go into a college rink to watch NHL. That was crazy when they released the ticket prices. Oh yeah, and and he said until there's a direction, it's like it's just as a fan, I just don't care. It's like I've well, been we've been we've been dragged through it enough that like they've they've done you know they've they've done this to us. It's their fault. But dude, not not just the fans. Imagine being a fucking player. Yeah. Like, oh, that's you, too. There's no. What What does Clayton Keller think right now? Like, what? No, I don't even care what he thinks. What's Clayton Keller's dad think? <laughs> yeah. Well, he'll let you know. Everyone Everyone needs to know. Well, Hopefully, it's interesting to think about. Act again. Because, you know, every time a player signs with a team, there's obviously like, there's a lot of promises that come from the team. Some of them small that like, we don't even, we don't even need to know about or, or that matters. Know, by the way. But like, what do you think the Coyotes promises these guys? Like, what makes guys re-sign there? What makes guys, you know, like Logan Cooley sign there over coming back to college? You know what? Because they they obviously didn't be like, oh yeah, by the way, like we might be in Utah. Well, they fucked up the bids. Like that's the other thing too. For uh, eh? was the it, bids? that was this year. The the um, oh god damn it. What bids? They got voted down. Moving. Oh no! Well, well, no, that was a shit sandwich because basically everyone that didn't want it paid way more money than the fucking organization no 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 no. that <laughs> it wasn't like what? also like jesus christ no it wasn't a bid situation it was a vote right so the right. campaign whatever oh, no, right right yeah they, they campaigned right. and the coyotes ignored it the coyotes and like, yeah, no one's gonna vote too no. much damage was done they basically had a horrible reputation so anything the coyotes came out and said that was factual like no, it was already cemented. Like people weren't gonna fucking believe them, and it's kind of on them for being oblivious, not doing shit. Right. Again, to your point, just morons at the helm. Yeah, it's brutal. Like so, for the hardcore like Coyotes fans that have been there since they were, I mean, since they moved there, uh, 
it's shout out Winnipeg. Because they've also just been the butt of all of these fucking jokes. And it's like, again, there are plenty of hardcore hockey fans in Arizona, not just Phoenix, but like elsewhere that absolutely you could make at the NHL work. And again, Gary Bettman literally has already said like, oh, we're fucking coming back, <laughs> which is <laughs> well, at least, wild. At least the fans like, have that. No, at least will come. At back. least they're coming back. He's like, like this uh, is not a failure yet. We're kind of we're gonna try. Hey, it. Minnesota yeah, came back. What I'm really fascinated though, because like we've talked about it the last couple drafts. See, they're like bringing in these exotic, big Russians. Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine dropping them in Salt Lake City to figure out like what Mormonism is? Like yeah, no, no vodka no. access. Like they're they're gonna defect back to the KHL no, first off style as fast as possible. The snowboarding and skiing is elite. They'll they'll be all right up there. Yeah, dude, and you can definitely do that as a professional hockey player. <laughs> that, that's definitely not breach of contract if you get hurt and you don't lose all of your fucking money. That's smart. I don't. I don't put it past the Russians. They'll still. They'll find a way. They'll figure it out. It'll yeah, fun. Either way, it's crazy how like again. It's. I'm not gonna. I can't. I guess I can't really say it. It just came out of nowhere because it's been coming forever. But it feels like it's been. It's been like so up in the air that like they can't possibly do this next well, year dude, craig and Morgan we're about is, to hit the playoffs and they're like yeah no they're moving <laughs> it's like but craig morgan right. made the rounds beginning of this week he went on spitting chicklets he went on with jeff merrick and it was all like yeah things have been done really poorly but there's like a chance they're making a bid for this and there is a possibility they can make it work and today it's like oh yeah they're pretty much gone well they're tw and they're <laughs> i mean they're twit they must have 97 different twitter admins they're all they've I been mean, even today after all this news came out they were like we're keeping hockey in arizona I was like jesus christ man that's the thing they, they keep on booting <laughs> access and they're like holy shit how many of you are there <laughs> they just keep hiring someone new who is just more insane. no 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 they 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 just like put it out there they gave the the login access to like all of the owners kids friends and yeah, they're, they're all in and they keep on booting them one by one and then there's always another one to like grab the torch and keep it, going it was very funny in the beginning now it's just like even everyone in arizona's like all right this is fucked up now like you're really like this is not fun we don't like like this is clearly a massive joke now which again they're like leave, leave. fucking organization leave. once again it's like even this isn't funny anymore so Either way, man, like it sucks because a lot of people from Arizona who have been fans since day one, like have said, like, we're here. Like, we want this to fucking work. And these people are running this organization like a bunch of dumbasses. It and, felt anticlimactic uh, today, too, because I remember in 2014, it was either 24, I think 2014, 15. Like, that's when they were seriously maybe going to move to Seattle. And I remember there was quotes coming out being like, the trucks are idling with like all the equipment, like we're ready to leave. And like that seemed, it was almost just like doomsday for the team. It's like, it was about to happen. And then they re-upped their deal and, you know, the saga continued. But today, like you said, it was kind of like a roller coaster. It was like, ah, I don't believe it. Like we've seen this before. And it was like, no, it's happening. So it's, yeah. it, it seemed kind of anticlimactic where like before, I mean, a couple of times before, it like it builds up to like oh it, this is gonna be the day this is gonna be the day and then you know obviously they're savers today it's like damn it's over for now we will see how fucking salt lake city works I, I posted a picture of just like the setup from this view and like a couple of pictures of the pizza for the awesome people at seventh half which is you have on to the planet you, you gotta have a slice but uh the 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 best comment so far from uh gpl our good friends go for puck live just immediately the n64 is pure epicness hell yeah that also reminds me when i did put the tweet out that we are going to minneapolis in 45 <laughs> minutes where should we go where oh, the, the darkest oh. furious dungiest dive bar pop yes someone replied cheesecake factory ah! <laughs> Dude, it was the funniest i was like we should probably go to cheesecake oh factory, my god dude. That sounds un fucking delicious unbelievable response. Oh, it's it's walkable well, he put the tm too he put the dude, fucking like fucking no way trademark. like not just any cheesecake factory like the he trademark the tweet it was so good is uh, there more uh, than one cheesecake like there's multiple locations I mean, of the same place i'm sure there's a few different types um, here types yeah totally they wouldn't sue the shit out of them <laughs> but it, it's only like a mile and a half two mile walk is it we could do it i yeah that sounds wonderful especially so what, any, any, anyone that, that uh yeah, yeah. 
Anyone that's bored later tonight, you can catch us at the Southdale Mall Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, there's a 90% chance we finish this and just get mobile again. Well, I there's a 90% chance. 90% chance I do. We got to we got to find those fucking scooters. That's what we need. To oh, do. yeah, the scooters are back. I, I saw some kids buzzing on the those oh, lime scooters. Nice. Dude, I'll hurt myself this weekend. <laughs> that's going to go bad. That's how I'll zip around St. Paul tomorrow. Straight straight up Alley Ray style. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, Z doesn't even know that story, so that's that's why he's freaking out right now. I'm just like, Ee. sounds uh, <laughs> like something that I have no input on. Um, <laughs> there's a clip of it on this channel. Just search it up, guys. Perfect. She tells the story. Moving on from Arizona, where should we go next? Uh, we could also talk about the second that I landed. Liam Ogren <laughs> called up. To the show, once the Wild were safely eliminated. out of the playoffs. All right, safely, bring them up. <laughs> safely eliminated from by the and, most well, disrespectful performance by Nathan McKinnon of all time. Oh he could have just scored three regular goals last night. I feel like that was calling, the meanest thing I've ever seen in my life. To, like to, that was to call boring. that just to just simply call that a hat trick is beyond disrespectful to what he did. That, they should have just given him the heart after. Mm, they got to see if the Penguins make the playoffs first. Yeah, that's true. That it, well, my plus seventy five hundred ticket would love it if Sidney Crosby won the heart. But um, that that was wild that you found that too at the beginning of the season. Yeah, like, insane. Yeah, I, I must be reading this wrong. Yeah. Seventy five hundred. Okay. I literally, I was like, okay, thank you. Um, I mean, not gonna happen, but whatever. Either way, Nathan McKinnon last night single handedly. Like, I, that was so mean. Like, it was just rude. I felt cyberbullied watching it. Like, it was just so fucked up. He just touched the puck. It immediately was like, here I go, Clydesdale mode, high stepping through the fucking neutral zone and hitting, I don't know, like his max speed was probably 87 miles per hour. That, that was the actual use of the turbo button. That yeah 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 to, to the point I was telling Z earlier and it encapsulates it perfectly. I posted the video of it last night when it happened, and there there were m- multiple people that commented like, "Yeah, it's because Merrill's a bum," and like other people are like, "Yo, it was actually Middleton." They're like, "Oh fuck!" Well, he looked like Merrill. <laughs> Merrill, yeah, <it> Merrill's influence. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was just. It was so disrespectful, so rude. Holy shit. Um, um who what? Okay, look up uh N O K. That's Michael Bronsag Nigord. Thank you. He scored an absolute fucking rip. Well, we gotta spend some time on this one we because will uh it. this guy is <laughs> hold on, hold on. Look up look up N O K currency and what that is first oh, of all. But yeah. regardless, um one hundred something or rather, don't know here by uh by <laughs> Lamao Zedong. <laughs> it's a, it's, isn't it? I'd be shocked if it. Yeah, this is going to be funny. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for the donation, <laughs> brother. Appreciate you. Um, uh, so it's Norwegian crony. Yeah, that's as and, uh, literally said it, yeah. And let me do the uh, math here. Wait. It is $9.22 with his fucking dough. Thank you so much for hitting us up with. We'll round up with the 10 piece. Thank you. The ten, the di- uh, hey, the you know what? Right now, nugget. right now, that'll buy you two Seventh Ave pizzas at Lunds and Byerly's. Bogo deal, crush it. <laughs> is, yeah. I'm a Norwegian brother, dude. Thank you so much for the donation. Is, wait, is that okay, Norwegian? Oh yeah, Norwegian crony. Yeah. All right. Do the honors. All right, we've moved on from the. No, wait, wait though. He. Z, I mean, you keep on claiming MBN as. That's yeah, sweet, he's mean. my absolute number one <laughs> draft son this From year. Sweden, <laughs> because I my region that I scout got. heavily is Sweden. Even though he is Norwegian, he is the number one prospect coming out of Sweden, which makes him my prospect and my absolute draft son. He is absolutely incredible. And again, I tweeted out the video. He scored, so he's in the semifinal of the Allsvenskan. Um, they won today, so they brought that series back to 3-2. Your garden's up 3-2. Um, that shot, that's his, so his number one offensive weapon is an absolute 
rocket launcher of a shot that he possesses. He doesn't shoot enough because like his big thing is like, again, that is his, by far the most dangerous weapon he has. And if he would just use it more often, I think he would probably put up even more points. Beginning of the year before the World Juniors, the worst puck luck I've ever seen a hockey player have in my life. Like, I think he probably hit 17 fucking posts. He was, like, serving up backdoor tap-ins. The guys were just missing. Uh, he was getting robbed. And then after the World Juniors, I think the first five games, he had points in four. And then he just kind of took off, elevated to Mora IK's top six. Uh, he also plays with a guy that should have got drafted last year, also from Norway, Peter Vesterheim. And he also plays with Noah Steen, also from Norway on that team. Um, but he is close to being ready to play in the NHL. He should be a top 15 pick with some of the guys that have elevated themselves so high in this draft. He'll probably fall a little bit. Where, where is he on 15. your board? Where are you taking him uh, again? 14 or 15, agnostic. probably 14 or 15, but that's yeah. the earliest. So the big, him? so the big question with MBN is going to be how much more, is there for him to develop into like how much more development is there or is he close to being the player he'll he will be in the nhl um and the big knock on him that keeps him like outside of probably like the top 10 because he might be the most well-rounded player in this draft class um that'd be a fun is the lack of a true like upside where he's not going to be a guy that's going to be putting up a point per game he's not going to put up like 40 goals a year. Like he's not doing that, but what he will be is the most reliable player in your lineup. Probably a second or third line guy that has the upside of put, giving you like 25 and 30. So, and he's also defensively elite already. So he can, again, like he could probably go one more year and he's going to, I can't remember what team he's going to go to next year and play in the SHL either way. He is moving. SHL is all that matters. He is playing I'm, in the SHL next year. I can't remember what team he's going I'm, to. But either way, he probably will only need one year, and then he could be absolutely full-time NHL player like a year later. Um, but with well, how many guys have the true crazy upside in the ceiling, he will probably be close to like a 15. Um, but he still should go pretty high in this draft. And if he goes higher than 15, I wouldn't be ah, shocked either because he's, he's, he's going high. to a team that I can Shaleftia, pronounce. There it Shaleftia, is. Yeah, yeah. He is going to Shaleftia, who's nasty. Uh, Hang on. Shout so out to Zeke. our boys, Adong, again, for <laughs> yeah. the dono and for all the hype here in the live chat. You're getting Z excited. Hang on. Yeah. So, Z, if we're talking about the teams that are in that range, like the, the fringe playoff teams that aren't playoff teams, oh, like obviously Wild would be sweet. Who do you not want him to go to? Like, who would ruin your day if he went to them? Uh, Detroit. Yeah. Because because always in the Atlantic, and also and, and, they've and they've and drafted in Pelica recently, and I they love get all, all the good ones. Prospects, so you didn't kill me. Yeah. Um, like Blues would be in the discussion. Yeah, no, I can't have Capitals blues. would be in the discussion. Although, dude, okay, real talk. Like, remove the logo. I don't know if I'd be more excited about a young line ever than the possibility of having Rick Dvorsky centering Michael Bransag Nigord and Jimmy Snuggerud. Like that, that makes me feel things. Yeah, that makes my heart hurt. Um, either way, he's my number one draft son. Do not want him to go to St. Louis. Really don't want him to go to Detroit. Really don't want him to go to Washington. Um, so all the teams oh, most Philly, Philly's in the too. mix. I love Philly now, mostly no. because of Tortorella, dude. I hope he wins uh, the Jack. He's not because they're not gonna make it playoffs now. They got the shit kicked out. They're, they're goaltending. They're on an they're, eight game scale. Once they're goaltender, they're starting. They, 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 they lost like game, nine to three to got, Montreal. Isha, <laughs> he's still the best coach in the NHL right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, no, Z Z would argue that uh, he's nowhere near as good as that guy down in Tampa. Oh my god! This guy right. in Vancouver is pretty good too. Not John good. Cooper. He actually the top people five are like favorite human dog, of all time. The the fact that people were saying a couple weeks ago like, well you you can't uh, you can't go with a guy like Rick Tockett because he like he had a loaded roster coming in. 
People were saying that the Canucks weren't even going to make the fucking make the playoffs. Play- right. I had like, them out of the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Am I the only one that thought they were a playoff team? Yeah. Did, Z and I didn't have them. Did anyone have Brock Besser hitting 40? Shout out Brock no, Besser. No, I did not have that. Nope. That, <laughs> Good for I had, him. I had him being, I had him being so traded happy. as part of it. I am so happy for he's Brock faced, Besser. He's faced a lot, like, in his personal life, family, and like physically with well, and he had to, injuries dude, as well. He had to live in Grand Forks for a year too. <laughs> People forget. So uh, no, I'm glad he's uh, doing it. By the way, sick, sick green lights and cryo chambers though. All right, um, I just have to go back. Freddie just with like hits us with the loaded question. What do we got? <laughs> what do we have to do to win the cup? We need better offense, better defense, and better goaltending. Should do it. Better special teams would help too. Which wild player was called the first <laughs> Michigan for the franchise? I mean, it's I mean, it's Kirill. Uh, mm, eh, I'm going Riley Height. Thing, height yeah. I'm going Height too. Yeah, Mateo, let's go. Well, if they give Adam Beckman more ice time, maybe he'll do it. Or if wow. they let it, well, sorry, if they let him no, play hockey. No, I think Marcus Johansson is the one that's most that's likely to do it. Have you that. seen? Have you seen his career average is like mid forties for points? Do this. <laughs> Stop this. And guys, I know that like. Everyone says that the Wild are technically mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, but if they can continue a 72% point percentage, who knows what could happen, right? Another thumbs down. <laughs> Another one. Give us a thumbs up. No, no, we deserve the thumbs down. <laughs> Hopefully that was one of the bots. Um, the Tijigenla, unbelievable. If they he's picked good. up, oh, he's absurd. Uh, he's carrying Kelowna, who they will be facing off against the Prince George Cougar. So Riley Height will be going up against Tej again. Hang on, though. Playoff. Is it nepotism for Tej to play for the team that his father owns? That's a good call. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> that really hurt. Uh, Everyone knows it's true. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. I don't, I don't even know where these like bubble friggin' thumbs up are coming from. To be perfectly honest, no, they're not thumbs up. They're thumbs down, and we they're, they're deserved. Every time, every time we talk about something shitty, it comes up. All right, here's a big one. Here's a big one. Uh, no, Michael. That's, no, up? that's getting shit on. So uh, we're at the soda pod. Passed when Addison was traded. Thanks for, thank freaking God. Now we're at Rossi for Calder. No one said that. Really? Oh, my fucking God. This team has so many things to fix. You left out the 700 dot, dot, dot. Yeah, there's there's a lot there. There's uh, a lot. I don't think anyone has ever said Rossi for Calder, but shout out Marco Ross for hitting 20 goals. I don't think it's outrageous for him to be in the final three. Yeah, no, I'm I don't. Just, I'm just saying no one's brought it up. It's, that's, that's like, that's the shit that comes up. Uh, people have, like, people I hate are, the wild because blah, 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 blah. blah. People have said it on Twitter. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure Jesse Pierce came out and said, do we have to consider Rossi for Calder? Well, and whatever. She was, she was being cheeky, but Bless people are taking it seriously, per usual. Faber, Bedard, Rem. <laughs> yeah, he's a fucking Rempy guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. He, sure. he lost the last bout, but he'll come back. Sure. All right. Who do you Great waste bout. more Kirkland Lube on? Him or uh, Reeves? I mean, are we going to be honest here? <laughs> he might be taking the throne. He might be taking the throne. Indeed. Is he a top six guy? We don't know yet, but. Yes. He's projected to be. He looks. Yeah, though, did we? We kind of like skipped off of the uh, Ogren. Yeah, I was talk. gonna say we, we now, moved right on. I, I have to give credit though. Uh, shout out! You can't even see this, and I don't care. Uh, Timmy Johnson, proud owner of the brewery that gives you the best craft beer at XL Energy Center. Um, and actually, early access here. Or no, this isn't the one. Dang, Rude Awakening, I believe, is what he said. The uh, crowler of the day will be for the Frozen Four here. Z crushing one of those with a straw is going to be like weirdly good and bad at the same time. I'm not sure how to feel about it, but what is what is your Timmy, thing with straw? Timmy, Timmy today said before that news broke, I was literally me hanging out with him at the tap room awaiting for Z's flight to land. And he just like went off on it's ridiculous that who's Nadinov just jumps right in the lineup and they probably won't even give Ogren a look this year. Like, why will they not let this guy play? And like, literally, as I'm on the way to the airport, I see that post and I just like tag Timmy underneath it. And he's like, ah, I feel right now. (laughs) This is good. This is good. He did this. He did this. He earned Liam Ogren. Yeah. Uh, Everyone. Barrel Theory Brewing Co. in St. Paul is the reason that Liam Ogren is called up and will play with the wild. Um. 
talking Ogren though, not as much about what you expect from him in whatever play he gets for the remainder of this year. What are your expectations for him long term? Like, who is he for the wild? Where does he slot in? Like, what is his ideal role and fit with this team as we look past the buyouts and like towards this team hopefully contending? Yeah, what's interesting with him is um when they drafted him, like his draft year, he set all kinds of records in the J20 in Sweden, like in terms of being a pure sniper. I mean, he had like 33 even strength goals in like 30 games. <laughs> like his shot, again, it is an absolute joke. But over the last two years, he actually has developed like much more of a playmaking game, like for checking defensively. So he is a fairly well-rounded player, but with legit sniper offensive upside. I think forever when I just looked at the prospect pool and where some of these guys fit in best, I have always like imagined a future line of like Ogren, Erickson, Eck, Matt Boldy, where Erickson Eck gives you all the defense plus just being a prick in front of the net and somehow putting up like 30, 40 goals from like the net mouth. Uh, Matt Boldy, again, probably gives you a little bit of everything because not only does he produce offensively, which by the way, he was not playing up to his standards at the beginning of the year, he's now like. I think he just had a personal best for points, possibly goals too. I think he did hit the 30 mark. Is that is that right? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, but it's crazy how he just like it didn't translate to the wild having success, but he's still like just turned his season around completely. Um, but then you have Liam Okren, who has continued to develop the two-way game, but he gives you the sniper um on that line. So like in my head, that's always been incredibly intriguing. Plus, I really would love a future Russian line of fucking uh, Kaprizov, Kuzadinov, and Yurov. That sounds so much fun. Um, but I do think Ugrin looks to me like second or third line sniper. If he's on your third line, he's going to give you some like defensive value and like forechecking ability, but he's also going to be a guy that can play in your third line and give you 25, 30 goals in his sleep. Um, but he absolutely has the upside of being like on power play one, like primary offensive guy, but he's not necessarily a driver, which is fine because like given all the guys they have in their pool and guys that are already on the team, and especially when uh, you think about Kaprizov being here, hopefully beyond this contract. Like, I mean, I don't know, dude, the, the year, the year his contract is up. <laughs> Yeah. Is the same time that uh Sucarello's gone. Yeah, well. Uh yeah. and I don't know if you pay attention to uh Fellowship of the Rank, we need to trade Kaprizov now with how well he's playing since he's not gonna re-sign because he's Russian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, Matt Boldy needs to be traded because he's terrible. <laughs> I just I don't know where these people come from, man. Segment. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I was either way, Ogren. He has developed even better than I actually thought he would when they drafted him. Like there was always a big concern that he is like a pure sniper and there is potential for him to grow into more of like a dynamic offensive slash two way game. But in the all Svenskin last year and in the SHL this year, once he got healthy, he proved he can give you a little bit of everything. But the the dynamic shot gives him like another edge, another like advantage that not many guys in the prospect pool have. Again, this is a kid that just like he kind of screams to be like I think he'll wear an A eventually at some point with Minnesota. Like he's been captain of Team Sweden, he's been a leader everywhere he goes. And like once he got healthy this year in the SHL, it was like. He was leading their team. He went from like, we got healthy. He was immediately on the fourth line. Then he scored one goal, projected into their top six or elevated to their top six and just did not leave. And then by the end of the year, he was their go-to guy on the first line, first power play unit. He was killing penalties. Like it gives you a little bit of everything. So again, like the three Swedes in that draft class, it was him, Lekker Amaki and Noah Ostland. Um, he's been my favorite since day one just because he does give you the potential of like that two-way ability um so i still think that 
he takes the cake there. But I, I thought he would be in Sweden for another year, to be honest with you. I was I shocked did too. when yeah. he came over. Mostly because uh, of the injury, right? Like, if he played a full season, I would have been way more on the train that he'd end up here. Well, that and, but again, like, with the thing we talk about all the time, it's just, like, these fucking contracts. <laughs> they just got signed. Like, the extension's just, like, all right. I mean, I'd rather him play in the SHL than in Iowa. Hang on. You're telling me that you don't want to see a Goudreau, Hartman, Felino fourth line? Uh, that's fine, but there's still so many other fucking guys that are still they have to fucking get rid of. If they, especially when they talk about height having legit chance to make the team out of camp next year, like first off is now played, dude. I'm legit KHL and like nasty, and he's back. Yeah, Isha, calm Isha's down. favorite guy. Hang on. Uh, Liam Ogren gotta, is here. He's going to have a shot to make the team next year. We got a real Adam Beckman, here. what are we doing with Adam Beckman? Well, no, he's getting traded. He's got to. That's the thing. It's just like, that's where it comes. Anthony LaPanta like, said he's getting traded. It must happen. It'd be like being ready. Like, Z, there's so many fucking contracts that Z, they signed. You're, like, you're also. So many moves. You're ignoring a landmine that's sitting out there. Oh, yeah. Who, no, who, who goes off in contract years? Marcus Johansson. Who's in a contract year next year? Experienced player of all time. Marcus Johansson. It's my guy. I will never say anything bad about him. I love him. I mean, I've always liked him too. I just he tough year. I have no problem with say. him. I have a problem with him being the set standard against which we're going to measure Beckman, who doesn't even have comparable minutes or usage or experience. This is a little in, bit of thing. So yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It's a shared frustration. Um, <laughs> but this isn't a podcast to carve the commentary. Guys. Oh, so we're uh, we're on. Uh... Oh, what up, Baki? It's been a hot second since I've talked to Baki. Uh, what are your thoughts about stream to Michigan State? Um, It'll be interesting. I need to see. I need to look at their recruiting class again. I need to see what like. I'm curious. Do you think Isaac Howard's does? That's going to be one that'll be fascinating to watch because obviously this year went significantly better. Is, do you think over. is uh, is Levshunov going to stay? Probably not. It's going to be <laughs> tough. I think he might go top. Well, depends on who takes him though. Three or four. He's going top five at worst. Yeah, yeah. He's not going later than five. But depending on which team, like maybe he chills out for. It minute. literally depends on like where Salayev goes. Because he might go too, which is fucking insane. But like, whatever. Will uh, you just like lose your marbles if Salayev goes first? I, uh, I would go. I would lose Ar marbles. Arizona if Coyotes pick first overall. Didn't lose their marbles if he goes first over. Coyotes pick first overall. Salayev goes. a shoe in. He's going yeah. to Salt Lake. Yeah. You know, like he'll be the face of that franchise. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think I would. It's a. I would say it is a big time long shot for Left Shoe not to be a Michigan. Oh State boys, State. we're getting comments from Twitter now. I didn't know. I didn't think the day would come. Oh, oh, we've had them before. You just told me I wasn't allowed to acknowledge them. Oh, we're acknowledging them now. What's up, Taylor? Yeah, I mean, so with Stramel, it was frustrating too. Like this year was supposed to be. He didn't have his fake AARP card. Right. Um. But like right at the beginning of the year too, he got hurt. And even though, like, it ended up just not being that, like, fresh start. Him going to Michigan State, it's like there's a fresh start versus a change of scenery, which I think that's what you're really hoping for if you're Charlie Stramel. Because, like, realistically, it was, hey, new, new class. And, like, look at all the guys leaving Wisconsin. Like, well, everyone's no, just Hastings, like, fuck this. Hastings, Hastings is Hastings so is like, we only want 35-year-olds. Hastings is fucked. It. Yeah. Like he's not going to get any top tier talent now. Team NHL teams PhD won't students, let him. You know, he only wants PhD students there. That's he's like, let me tell you guys about my experience scouting Alberta. Um, I I also think though it's it's not just a new situation, change of scenery, like new lease. On familiarity life. with Nightingale. Familiarity with Nightingale's good too, but it's going to be quieter there. Yeah, being like Minnesota, like. Playing for Wisconsin, playing for Minnesota, you're going to get way more negative attention drawn to you. He can go to Michigan State, and he's going to be largely ignored unless he's playing against the Gophers. You know? Yeah, I still. Yeah. Uh, if, if he played for the Gophers, let's all be real. Like, 
he would have been, be, been a terrible decision in a horrible spot because like he's already taking way more bullshit from like people who like didn't really know who Charlie Stamen was before they drafted him. That's the shit that drives me crazy. They all the freak way, out because like they have no clue who he was. Which they looked at his fucking you, like I'm pretty sure page or his hockey DB, we, and they're like, "This is who we took." And well, people forget did. he was consensus top twelve going into last year. Like, well, and we did your like. We I did. said Minnesota. I bet they would love to take Charlie Strable in the preseason last year. And we did the like started. We did the mock of like, okay, Z, if you're picking for these GMs, who would you take? And I think you took him like 28 or 29. It's not like this guy was like a a non first round like total bust yeah, player that, that end of Judd Brackett yeah, yeah. just took a total swing on. Yeah. Like, no, he is a legit. It's a good player. He is like legit player. Like, there might be questions about that upside, but there's a reason he fucking made two world junior teams before he got like before he did make it this year which like usually this year after you get drafted that's the first time you make that world junior squad he had already played in two like he is a legit player and because of where he got drafted and who he got drafted in front of like literally directly in front of like he just has been shit on mercilessly he does not deserve any of like the dumbass comments like you can talk shit about his fucking like production in college hockey but his freshman year wisconsin was an absolute fucking shit show and this year obviously new coach maybe it's gonna change then he gets hurt never ended up going well i'm confused by this comment michael i need you to elaborate is it that we shouldn't think he's gonna get better with another team or that, he, like, what does him being a first round draft pick have to do with thinking he's going to get better with another team? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't understand. Whatever. Um, <laughs> either way. Rush, rush pass. Hey, it uh, could go the uh, little comment to make everyone feel better that likes to go off on him. Yeah, it could go the exact same way. It could not like. Yeah, sure. And if it does, we'll back off. Be like, okay, yeah, maybe it's just not in the cards for him. Sorry. But how, how about how about we give him the chance? Given that year one he was on an absolute dog it shit with the Wisconsin team, it was so bad. It was such a bad team. See, and then this year bullshit. you start with an injury, and then you end up having the year that he did after the injury, where like, yeah, he was never going to get out of the doghouse with Hastings because it's not one of his guys. It's not an older player, like to think that he doesn't deserve another shot with another team, and like. A fresh slate for you to reevaluate him is insane. It was. It's just like you can have an opinion, but the shit that when people are like, "Stop saying it," I'm like, "No." I've watched him play hockey for fucking five years. <laughs> like I'm not gonna fucking. But like, yeah, I guarantee what? you, they haven't watched a full game of his. You know what? You're <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> whatever. It's fine. Um. It is what it is. We'll see how it goes for him. I'm hopeful for him again. It's it's going to be a bit just having Hastings or not not having Hastings and having Nightingale as his coach, who's been with him for years, will be a big help either way. So here we go. We got yeah. Jupe GPL. We need to do a live stream, by the way. Me and Isha against you and Vigo Mario Kart head to head. But he's right. What's he going to do? Disease point. Let's see what he does before people sit here and decide to carve this poor kid who, like, probably has dreamed to get drafted by the Wild, and everyone has shit on him nonstop since. I, I just I don't Michael knows it. though he's got he's got the inside Look, scoop. He also, he also just told me I have not actually watched Charlie Sterling play hockey for five years. You're right. <laughs> I lied. Yeah. I was making that up. He's a bust. Total bust. Total. Anyways, we can move on. Um, let's see. What else do we got here? Uh, Cappy. Is Ugin scoring three or four on Friday? <laughs> in Vegas. Seven. Is that what they're playing? They're in Vegas, right? I don't even know. I think they're in Vegas. But what a the, day. The season's day. over if you didn't hear. So you can get what we're, we're going to watch. <laughs> do, do these points even count if he scores? <laughs> it's like a preseason game, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. I'm excited to just see what line he ends up on. If they put him on the fourth line, I'm going to be mad. That's the thing. I, I hope he gets. It's probably going to happen. Good. It's going to happen. Um, it like he, the poor kid like came to Iowa. They immediately, I think they played Hershey first game, who is nasty. 
and they got the ever living dog shit kicked out of them. And like, it was so brutal. By the way, first off, tucked. Next game against Hershey, I think they lost two, one, three, two. First off, tucked again. Um, but like, first two games in Iowa against Hershey, one of the best AHL teams of the last like 10 years. She's back. <laughs> and like, they just got their fucking dicks kicked in. Uh, so it was tough to evaluate anything that Liam Ogren did um, in oh. those games. But I'm glad that he is going to get a shot to uh, last couple of games here. I'm, I, again, I am very curious. Uh, what hang on. Pull that back up, Isha, because this is, this is relevant. No, no, no. Michael. To be clear, Michael, I'm not the one saying positive things about Strammel. I'm the one who loves Addison. He is my boy. And you can say whatever you want. The numbers, analytically, on what he provided offensively cannot be debated. And... That's fine. We can debate Addison forever. But Z is not the one sitting here pounding the drum for Addison. He is the one saying that Stramel has actually played good hockey before. Yeah, believe it or not, shockingly. It's crazy. It's crazy to say like there's a room of three of us, and because one of us likes Addison, the other one doesn't know shit about prospects. It's fine. We all miss. <laughs> we all miss. I mean, hey, in baseball, if you hit a third of the time, you're an all-star. So that's a good point. Um, let's see our guy Cosgrove. Um, I can't read it because this fucking ring light. Do we have any D men who are projected <laughs> to be a top four guy, or are the wild going to have to make a trade eventually? Oh uh, no, I mean like Carson Lambos absolutely projects as a top four D man. That guy's a fucking beauty too. Yeah, and he's a good ass dude. Um he, he labeled himself as the most likely to look homeless going out <laughs> with the team. What a great guy. By the way, his dad <laughs> also a fucking beauty on Twitter. I've had some messages from him. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this guy rules. Um, no, but Lambos gives you, again, like he's got like the upside that we saw like at his best, especially like the WHL, like the ability to walk the blue line, quarterback a power play, but then like, his draft or the year after he got drafted, they really went away from him playing like just like power play. And he really was playing heavy, heavy, heavy defensive minutes for the uh, formerly Winnipeg and Kootenai Ice, now Wenatchee Wild. Um, Pretty crazy. I have to say it every time. Um, so he's not just like. He's got the upside that we've seen before where he like he can dance the blue line, make you look silly, but he does have legit defensive prowess. So well, but Z, uh, what what about world juniors? Yeah, oh, for fuck's sake, fuck off. Um but this is so much more fun to say to you in person. Yeah, well, that's the thing that drives me <laughs> us too, is like people also talking about him in the AHL. They're like, where are his numbers? I'm like, I don't know. He's playing 26 minutes a night and he's playing like. And it's not a good team. Let's, let's be real. This is not a good it Iowa Wild team. zone on a shit fucking team. I don't know where his points are. Um, again, I we would like to see more numbers or more offensive numbers from him, sure. But it's not like he has been <laughs> cool. like, sent into the, the easiest of roles of all time. You know, Cole, I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Freddie, thanks for all the comments, by the way. Is BC going to win the Natty, Z? I mean, they're Grinnell says so. pretty big favorite. I mean, what's interesting is going to be how... Are they, they that big of a favorite, though? Like, with them versus BU, are they, like... Yeah, they've got perfect? more... They've got more fucking heavy hitters. Like, that line of... Like, just, like, the freshman line's insane. But you have Cutter Gauthier. So, the, realistically, though, like, more than, like, the... Uh, the Who, has the Who has the best player? Who has the best player? Well, that's the thing. That's what I'm so curious about is the uh, the Hobie. Because I could see them giving it to Cutter Gauthier. I don't know how you don't give it to Celebrini. I don't either. That's what they like. Go, like they're both well, here, doing shit the that we've never seen can, before. Can, do they factor in Thursday's games or not? I have no idea. Like, is that know. part of the consideration, I'm wondering? Because... Otherwise, I, I don't know how they don't pick Celebrini. And that's like no slight to Goche. Like he's been sick, but there was debate whether or not he should have even been the guy from his team. Like 
there's a lot of people that were saying Will Smith is like a big snub for this. Yeah, I think Will Smith has more points. But Gauthier is. He's... But Gauthier got himself traded. <laughs> I don't know how you beat that. Yeah, yeah. Strong armed the uh, Philadelphia <laughs> Flyers organization. So he must. The, ev- no, everyone too. If he if he does win it, be like. I mean, if he was still looking forward to being one of Torts' players, do you think he would have been in a place to win this award? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but I, I will not be shocked if it ends up going to Gauthier. But like, like Celebrini was. Can, can we agree that it's not going to buzzer him. reverse hit Jackson Blake? Yeah, it's not going to Jackson Blake. Even yeah. though he had a monster year, we can f- pretend that hit didn't happen. Uh, I mean, he very good player. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. be clear, <laughs> sick player. But and uh, he's he's off to Carolina. Apparently, Carolina is signing every prospect they have. Yeah, him, Bradley Nadeau, which is a bummer because Maine is fun. Oh, for fuck's sake! I will give Michael Curtis what he wants. No, like Jesus Christ. <sighs> The, 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 uh, not it, the, that, hang on, the, hang on, just though. Smiling right hang now, on. Like that, with that villain but evil no, but, smile right now. No, but, but, but Michael, Michael, hang on. I want you to go back and watch our live stream from that draft, and you tell us how we felt. We were surprised. We were shocked. The candle actually in front of us, to be accurate. I think he's just making a joke about the recliner and how it makes fart noises. No, if, I, if I'm actually making fart noises, that would be pretty cool, though. No, I'm just saying, but to be serious, this candle's been farting the whole it's, time. It's been pretty crackly. No, it's not. Uh... Which, yeah, we had to double it. But, uh, yeah. We we all expected it to be Perot, but, like, Z, I, I think you need to touch on that. Like, he's been great this year, and obviously, like, that line has been great for several years. We don't know what he's going to look like when he doesn't have Smith and uh, Gabe Perot to lean on, but talk about the concerns with Gabe Perot and why you might not take him. Well, Gabe Perot had one of the higher upsides in the draft, which is why you like. But the floor. The floor is struggling to play. The floor is like walking on peg legs because he can't skate. Well, the skating's a problem. I think he'll be fine and he will absolutely. He probably will. He probably will. Uh, But. That is the big concern, the right? Upside. Like so, the yeah, skating is like, a concern. Like literally everybody said at the time, including myself on that fucking live stream, you bet on the upside. I know I you're, get you're, it when the wild looked at their prospect. Well, I again I'm not a like draft according to need guy. Right. I but there's also why, you so I get why they made the decision if you're like a if you're drafting based on need or whatever, and like there are legit concerns with for all, there's legit concerns with Slamberl in terms of like pure upside. For I would me, also... you take the upside, but like that's not going to dictate how I evaluate a prospect moving forward. After once the draft ends, I'm not going to be like, ah, I'm going to watch him play and assess his play based on the guys that went after him. That's insane. So it's yeah. fine. I I will say so that's you, it. That's it, the that's the bottom line. No, but here's here's here's, here's the best way to put it though. No, 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 but. I, it 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 warrants criticism. I understand why people are mad that we didn't take Perot. Like I get it. Optically, with what he's done, it makes sense. But you're looking at a guy in Gabe Perot who is either a top six forward or he is not in the NHL. Whereas Charlie Stramel, again, we'll see what happens this year, but he's basically a locked and loaded bottom six center, the kind of guy you need for what the wild hope to be in the future. Like he is a no shit NHLer. It's just, he does not have the upside that Gabe pro has. He is not going to be a first line center. There is, uh, there is no world where I see Charlie Strammel being a first line center in the NHL, but I'm going to be pretty surprised if he can't find a way to carve out a third or fourth line center role. You know, it's the security versus boomer bust. And there's a guy that, Clearly, Judd Brackett, who we all speak very highly of, I'll grab you another one in a sec. <laughs> but we'll, until proven otherwise, he we trust the wrong Judd one. Brackett. No, that was the one. That's one that's where I'm at. I'm waiting to see a prospect that disappoints me, and then we can talk. But so far, Brackett hasn't done anything that I've been bothered by. No. Whatever. 
So that's just where we're at with the discussion. Hey. It is what it is. Everyone's going to... All right, we're up. Their own right, see his designated. We are not allowed to talk about Charlie Strammel Never the rest of the night. Again. Ever. Ever. <laughs> In no context. Oh. All right. All right, I'm gonna yeah, grab. I'm gonna grab refills. Yeah. Um. You sure you need anything? Think. Oh, by the way, the ball's down. The 24 safe shutout. Thank God. I um, I need hang it on. so badly. As, as I that. hang on though, as I walk away, everyone was saying it on Twitter. I'll let you guys have fun and have some conjecture around it. But this was the Calder game, and literally, Bedard gets shut out. The entire team gets shut out, and every single wild rookie. Got on the score sheet. Yeah. Go off. I mean, coming off that Winnipeg game where they just oh, smothered God. them and made them look like the small boys that they it's are compared crazy. to all the big boys in the NHL. I mean, like it wasn't that Murat looked bad in that game. It wasn't look like it, it didn't look like Rossi had a bad game either. It was just they just outmuscled them. And what? when Boldy was like your only hope to at least create space, you're like, oh God. It is. There's, there's no room for this guy to even score or even set up offense right now. His passing was off that night, and we're relying on him to clear space. It's like, oh, God. So it was a rough night, but it was good to see that literally the the, the next day, them actually get their confidence back. Not that I think like they lost a lot of it in the Winnipeg game. It just seemed like the whole team was dejected, except for, again, Faber, which is why I fucking love this kid. He's unreal. 10 seconds left. Even Yorks and Eck look dejected. With 10 seconds left in the offensive zone, they had one more play in them, and Faber's still like talking to everyone, telling them, you're gonna go there, you know, just letting everybody know what the play is. We got one more left in us, boys, and the game was already like far gone. But done, that done. that's what I love about him. And um, for the most part, yeah, it was cool to see obviously Wallstead get the get the shutout. But uh in in addition, the young guys just flourish in that one. Yeah. No, I mean, and again, like with Faber, we like I think everyone at this point has talked about before. That's a guy that probably at some point is going to have a C on his sweater. It's not, like he already looks the part. Like you yeah. said, every shift he's out there talking to everybody, patting the guys on the back, though smiling when you know, <laughs> supposed to you're supposed to be in game time right now, but he's keeping everybody a little loose. So yeah, I, I've I've just been impressed, and being able to see him up close now this year was was awesome. It was you know exactly like how he was in college, just. So comfortable at this level. Yeah, I mean, I was fairly confident he would be more than fine this year in the NHL. Like, I think we all were like, we'll see what the ups and downs look like. Like, we'll see what happens when he finally hits, like, the rookie wall or, like, finds himself in a slump. And it just, like, never happened. And, like, the point production and the offense is something that he started showing his last year of college. But at no point were any of us sitting here like, oh, yeah, that will absolutely translate into the NHL. And, like, with him, there's a good – there's not a good chance, but there is there is a chance that, like, this year with his points, like, we don't see him hit 40 again. Because, like, the best part of his game is legitimately being, like, a 25-minute-a-night shut down, like – Throw him up against every team's top. If, well, if he's well, your power play line. quarterback, that's a problem. Well, that's <laughs> one thing too is no team was able but to like, even, adjust their system to shut him down this year. He, well, even when they threw him on that power play, he did way better than like I agree. even expected. So, well, like, it's crazy too. Like all of the Gopher guys that Joe Smith and I have had on Fellowship of the Rank, all of them when we asked them about like the Calder discussion, him versus Bedard, they're all like, "Yeah, I." I honestly didn't know that he could do this. Like the defense, everyone knows. Like you go into a corner, he's coming out with the puck. But the offense, they they didn't even know. Like not even from practice. They're like, yeah, this is like a shock to us. <laughs> well, and, and that's why like when they throw him the bag, which they are going to. It's going to be above nine. They're going to give him all ready. of the money. Whenever there is a rookie or a player who like finally has their one breakout year whether they've been in the league for a few years and finally like they have that monster year and then they get like a big time contract you're like oh shit is this just gonna be a one-time thing again the reason you're not, i'm not really if they want to give Faber a ton of fucking money i could not be less concerned about that because again it's not the offense that any of us or anyone in the wild organization 
is looking at and saying that's what we're paying for. It's the fact that this guy is the sixth most used player. <laughs> like he is has the sixth highest average time on ice in the league as a fucking rookie. And he is a legitimate shutdown top pair defenseman that this year has shown that he does have offense that can translate at the NHL level. But if, the, if he doesn't hit 40 points next year or ever again, not a big concern whatsoever because he is your guy that's going to be able to play 30 minutes a night on several occasions when he has to. And he still has potential to put up points too. So he, he's unbelievably valuable. Hobby, um, you have your hand up, please. Uh, please go ahead. Ah, yes. Um, and this is not because I think that Bedard should win because I'm definitely team Faber, but I think people are crazy if they think it should be a landslide victory for him. Dumb. But well, no, it's I don't know, it's kind of fun. It not conversation. It gives right, us something. The conversation's to talk about. fine. Yeah. yeah, the the firm, the one aggressive. Player. Yeah, everyone that's like, no, it has to be Faber. It has to be Bedard. Like it should be a very close vote that one of them edges out. If it ends up being a 99 to one, like Caprizov versus Robertson, then yeah, either side has every right to be pissed because it shouldn't be. But the interesting thing that's come out of this discussion, like all of us now that like, you know, analytics are more prevalent. I think we've all been victims of saying plus minus doesn't fucking matter. And everyone immediately references, but Dard is a dash 38. What is the number? Where's the threshold crossed where it starts mattering, right? Like if he was a dash 10, no one fucking cares. Is the threshold like crossing from 19 to 20? Is it being in the 30s? Like where does it actually become a thing where it's like, yeah, I know I said plus minus doesn't matter, but it does when it's this bad. Half, yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's like a a number. Because, but I no, mean, but like answer Kucherov's plus minus. <laughs> he's like a plus, I think he's less than 10. And it's like, I'll take that guy. And he's going to be in the top three for MVP. And I don't give a fuck. I'm like, yeah, 140 fucking points. Yeah. Be a dash two. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the thing that that's where it gets interesting. But like the major outliers, I think is where it becomes relevant. But, like, also, Bedard, like a dash 30, whatever, you might say that's an outlier. That team is one of the worst hockey teams I've ever seen in my life. And he is 18 years old, basically doing quite literally everything for them. So um, that's when it gets, that's where I'm like, I don't even have, I have a, like, that, yeah, we might consider dash 30 something an outlier, but at the same time, what, what the fuck is this kid supposed to do? No, 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 and it's it's a shit team. Yeah. That's like, the thing. Well, that's where I'm just saying, like drawing the line. I get it's tough. You know what I mean? Like, what do his underlying numbers actually look like? It's all well, like I don't think anyone on that team probably has. No, amazing, but but uh, does it look better than the dash thirty eight represents? Right. You know what I mean? That's that's where I'm more curious. Like, I think people are way too fixated on that because, like, I'm sorry, who's he playing with? Who's his goalie? Who's the blue line behind him? Who are his line mates? For God's sake, mm -hmm. like. It's bad. It's not a good look, but it's also like that's not his fucking job. Yeah, I mean, he's still. At, Let's be real. By the way, I just had to comment on Nick Lane's comment here. Yeah, you don't you don't pay a forty point D man nine. You pay him nine point five. Pay him nine point five. Next question. Nine two five feels right. All right, nine two five. Yeah. That comment came in just like after Z. Well, because what's whole, hang on, like, hang on. <laughs> tangent about what's what's Kaprizov make? Is it nine even? I don't even know. What is it? No, it's not. I think it's not even. Yeah, nine two five. That's the number. Ah, uh, he will be the highest paid guy for a year, and then hopefully Kaprizov surpass. What's Kaprizov gonna make? Twelve mil, probably. Whatever he wants. That's. I think that's he's, the starting. That, like, I think that's where negotiation starts. Is right around twelve mil. And his negotiation. Whatever starts, it takes. What do I take here. from me to make Matt's come back? <laughs> hang on, hang on. I also Other need to that, know. I hang care. on. They're like, um, you they're, know that he Krill, demands Krill Mats is retiring. He's like, what do we have to pay him? No, to not do that. <laughs> but it's it's also uh, no, he said he wants to. I don't care. 
It's not up to him anymore. His agent's like, I'm sorry, uh, Kirill's not prepared to negotiate right this second. They're like, Kirill's what do you also mean? retiring. Well, no, no, no. He's like, what do you mean? And he's like, Kirill said that his stipulation for negotiating is that all negotiation talks be handled over By. a Billy Sushi dinner. <laughs> By Matt Zugrell's agent. <laughs> for Kirill. <laughs> What else you guys got in your outline? I don't know, but we got like 10 minutes before we either have to be very quiet or stop. So, all right. So 10 more minutes. Get your comments in guys. Let's get your comments in. Uh, Something about gophers that you skipped. I saw. Yeah. We haven't talked about Matthew Wood. Oh, go off. Please Dude. like sell me on how excited I should be about again. I a, feel like, uh, hang on, uh, uh, a snug more wood line. Oh my God. Okay. That's unreal. Um, I, didn't, <laughs> I actually hadn't heard that yet. Um, <laughs> snug more wood, but I feel like we brought up, so we talked about the transfer portal last week and like, obviously Matthew Wood came up and I think we just like, imagine he came to Minnesota and that was I'm, basically I'm the happy. gist of the whole conversation meanwhile we're like yeah stream old michigan state that's done <laughs> like like it's not confirmed but like it yeah, we know that and then i think it was the next day so like even before the podcast actually dropped like it was like matthew went to minnesota we're like holy fuck I the fact it. that jimmy snuggerud has confirmed that he is it. absolutely coming back and it's not gonna be a logan cooley situation he is back and you are also adding matthew wood uh, to, the, to those out there, by the way, phenomenal. No, at at UConn, no chance. Day one. No chance will Snugger would be Cooley. This is a guy from Minnesota attached. He's not going to renege on this, and all of a sudden in the summer, go with the Blues. So, I mean, Matthew would like between the 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 goal scoring ability just like just that with him and Snuggerud is fucking unbelievable like Matthew Wood I think his freshman year when he was draft eligible I think he was oh god top 10 the country in goals and like there were a lot of games where you're like I haven't noticed him at all and it did they were like oh man it's gonna affect his draft stock and then all of a sudden the third period he would decide hey you know what i i've decided i will be tucking a hat trick in the third period by myself like he has the ability he's big he's fucking mean too um but the like that shot is an absolute joke and this year he did it at uconn with most of those drafted prospects leaving like they were not the like UConn's been trending in the right direction for a little bit. This year did not go well, and it did not change anything for him. Where he continued to produce, um, so it was actually a surprise to see him enter the portal. But uh, again, just the fact that he's going to be in Minnesota and Snugger is coming back, Oliver Moore will still be in Minnesota. Like it is cool. that that's a boost and a half how wild is it though all of the first round draft picks for the gophers that are all going to the fucking central you've <laughs> yeah, got yeah, more yeah. and renzel going to it chicago like <laughs> snuggerud going to the blues now wood with the predators it's it's concerning lj mooney when he gets here he'll probably get drafted by uh he'll be colorado fascinating guy to watch like his highlight reel is insane like every time he touches the puck like my favorite right? he goes sports center top 10 mode every but like specifically for himself if he develops like more like playmaking for like like you know, seven or eight inches He's gonna have to, you know, not be five six. You He's know? so good, though, man. It's crazy. It hit, again, just like his highlight reel is one of the most entertaining videos you could ever fucking. We watch. we need you got to make that one. Next. I'm gonna we need that. Video. And like, everyone, by the way, that's like pissed that Logan Cooley like burned the team and left. He is the reason that L.J. Mooney is coming to the Gophers 
thank him. And to, to the that point, too, Z, I'd almost argue that him not getting taller is good for the Gophers because that means he's got to play two or three years instead of going after one year, right? <laughs> he's got no choice. But I, uh, I'm so excited for him. And cool, cool even said, like, God, it'd be pretty cool if he wore number 92. <laughs> Like what, the plays he's making as like a, I mean, last year he was doing it as like a, what, 16, 15, 16 year old. Like, again, it's just like every time you watch him play, you're like, how the fuck did, like, how does he even think of this move? Like he, that's a guy that thinks eight plays it. Like he is just reading the defense at a comical rate and like what he can execute on the fly. It's a joke. Like it's a joke. Like the skill, the goal scoring ability. If he develops that playmaking ability where he can create for his teammates or like wants to, because so many times he touches the puck, he's like, yep. ISO, <laughs> ISO mode, fucking like everyone just get out of the way. And it works 90% of the fucking time. It's unbelievable. So he's going to be, a, if nothing else, he is going to be one of the most fun players to watch in college hockey. All right, we got five minutes left. Let's fire through some of these comments that I bookmarked here that we haven't got to just to show all you guys who are joining us uh, our appreciation. 30 live viewers throughout this whole... I don't even know what to call this live stream. Without an outline, I'm a Shit mess. Show. But uh, It's a live live stream. Z, I mean, you just calm, cool, collected. So as soon as Z was like, you know what? This is chill. This is my element. I was like, you know what? I feel a lot better about how this. it used to go. I had no <laughs> plan by myself. That's true. You had no one to talk to. <laughs> The, and, my and, dog. and you didn't have uh, wa watchers like commenting either. It was no. just like it was just me. Oh was, boy! He was like me he would talk to me, be like Isha. I know you're gonna see this. You can leave this in. Whatever. Preemptively yelling at Isha. Me and the voices in my head. Yeah. All right. That's so let's fine. just fire through here. some of these. If you guys don't have much to comment on them, just just say that. But uh, again, appreciate you, Michael. How bad did this make Mosco look? Not winning a natty with that club. You know that <laughs> college hockey. I don't know. The, First off, yeah, it's it's a one game series, right? Which is tough, but I will say, like, I'm with Michael. I was at those games, and I'm with my dad and my brother in law, who are like nowhere near as entrenched in hockey as us and all the listeners. And we all looked at each other with like six minutes left in that game, and we're like, Gophers are gonna fucking lose. Mm -hmm. Like we just knew they were playing a shell prevent defense when they should have just kept pushing the envelope. And you that know, was a, the crazy part. A more experienced, older, more physical team won out. And is the, the call on Cooley questionable? Yeah. But it's also questionable to put out your second line and second pairing for the start of overtime and losing 10 seconds in. That I I I was prepared for the loss. I'd already mentally prepared through the intermission that I'm like, you know what? Quinnipiac's gonna win. This fucking sucks. I was not mentally prepared to deal with face off drop puck go down you lost that crushed you, me you made it back to your seat like i did make it back to my seat because they stopped port. selling fucking beer in tampa which was garbage yeah that's always tough john i don't think it matters oh, they ain't making the playoffs this year so whatever uh thanks okay. for john john we can read we can, we can well we jesus can. christ that was like the most aggressive middle finger that he has ever well i mean i love john Rollins. but like really we're we gonna we can you think we're here for JoJo 2.0 for like next year? I think it would take them showing him something pretty impressive next year for them to make another like deadline ad of any substance or with any term. I think the focus is make some room to see yeah. what you got with these young guys and hopefully they can get you to a first round playoff appearance. I think I think everyone just needs to pray that Dean Avison gets another job. <laughs> So when is Yurov going to play in the show 2025? So, again, I feel like I have... Am I missing anything? Has he still not signed that? It's game? undecided, and Russo's saying it's not happening. Uh, apparently, when I was recording with Joe, I did, like, a triple take because he, like, seemed convinced, like, yeah, there's actually a decent chance he does sign with the Wild and come but over. Mateo was saying so in the chat know. that he's he came over, but I don't... I don't, he I don't. came over? No, he didn't. He scored yesterday, so... Um, and they lost, so they're down. I think you're high. No, no, they're, there was a comment in here. There was a comment in here. They're down. I think that's made up. God. Is it 2-1 now in the series? He scored a sick goal yesterday. They blew a 3 nothing lead and lost 5-3. But Yurov mm. scored a bank shot. 
from That's behind, all we care about. Off, from behind the net, right off the goalie's back and in to make it three nothing. Again, they lost five three. Bro, I was just gonna say, uh, I don't know who. He liked... looks phenomenal in the playoffs, though. It's gonna be a fun edit for you, Isha. I can't yeah, tell half the time if he's talking under the mic or not. <laughs> oh God, yeah, whatever. whatever. Crank it, kill oh, it. No, dude, this is the same mic I use at home, and you, I'm like, I've literally just put his volume all the way up, so you, we <laughs> we can probably hear you and I coming through his mic. There's always next yeah, year. Probably. Um, by the uh, way, our only Facebook like is coming from our boy Dan Brown. Bradley, big shout to you, Dan. We miss. Hey, that. Dano. Alrighty, so we got like one minute here to okay. wrap. If Rossi finishes with more goals than Bedard, does Faber win the Calder? That would be really cool if there was a stipulation there where it's like, if you have a rookie teammate that outscores your competitor, like they're removed, erased. That'd be really funny if the writers or whoever the fucking vote. I don't even. The fact they have all these different people voting for different awards drives me fucking nuts. I, I know Joe like, Smith has the a vote. GMs that vote for the goalies. It's the weirdest, which is insane. Because you know who, do- you, you know who doesn't know shit about goalies, GMs, GMs who are throwing these guys the fucking bag. It's not. Hey, last one, last one. If the Wild win the lottery and move up to three, who is these pick? Well, it's going to depend on Salayev. Tell you what, Z, give us your top five in order. Who are right. your top five for the draft? And then people can figure it out as they see fit with who might get drafted where by the other teams. Celebrini one. Demidov too. Yeah, I figured. I think the dream for Z is that Demidov Lindstrom, is there at three for Lindstrom the Wild. Three. Cat and four. Dickinson five. That is spicy. I like it. It was. It, I don't know if I actually mean it, but no. But I mean, I, th- I think three, I, I think Demidov is the guy you're hoping is there at three, right? There's yeah. I would. It, <sighs> Well, he probably will be because they're going to He fucking, probably will be because Salayev or Levshunov. Like, oh, the giant be. fucker from, yeah, it's going to be. He'll be there at three. I'll be curious to see how far. If he falls beyond three, I may just end the stream. Am I a big guy, Tree? Yeah, Johnny. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're a big fucking guy. <laughs> Great movie. Uh, I, I have a toy pony. He takes big shits. I think that'll do it. That's, that's usually how we end it. That'll do it. <laughs> First ever live edition. Thanks to everyone for tuning in, especially the 644 bots. Oh, I've just been bot. impressed this whole time looking at that number. If we missed your comment, like the video, subscribe, and comment on the live stream after it's posted. We'll get back to you as we always do. Z, Hoppy, thank you for having me on. This was fun. Let us know if you hated it too. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Five stars with hatred. Five hatred stars. Five.